Okay, the next topic is risk, uncertainty and variability. Now this topic uh, could be somewhat controversial because different people have different notions and meanings for these three words and the good news is it does not matter what we call some of these things but the more important thing is how do we use that to make decisions. However, I think for the sake of uh, completeness it is important to address these things. So first let us talk about risk and uncertainty. Now we are going to take a quantitative approach for the most part there is very little qualitative decision making that we are going to talk about in this course. So when we look at a quantitative approach we are talking about somehow quantifying various things. Okay? Now the uncertain things or the risk and so on needs to be quantified or characterized. Okay? These two things are important. So the question is how do we go about characterizing this thing called risk and this thing called uncertainty. Now the words risk and uncertainty mean different things to different people. Now if you want to characterize uncertainty some people say well if you can characterize it what is uncertain about it. For example if you toss a coin and there is nothing uncertain about it you are going to get one of two things heads with probability 0.5, tails with probability 0.5 what is uncertain in there. Yeah there is a slight uncertainty that it might stand like this like uh, uh, in the middle but you know, other than that uh, basically <coughs> there is no real uncertainty according to some people I am not in the camp. Okay? I am in the camp that prefers to call that as uncertain that means the outcome of something is not known with certainty. Okay? That is what I mean by uncertain. So what, when I say when I toss a coin I might get a heads or I might get tails what I really mean is the outcome is not certain. You do not know with probability 1 that something is going to occur. Okay? That is what I mean. However, there are a lot of people who will not call that uncertain. In fact, there are even people who believe that if you toss a coin you know exactly where it should land. Okay? We will talk about that in just a moment. Okay? Now the word risk also has some situations. Now for example, you know a lot of people call what I call as probabilistic characteristics as risk. But sometimes if you are in a win-win situation what is the risk involved? Right? I mean you are making a decision between options such as let, say for example you have come into IIT and you are deciding which program to go into, okay, which department to join or which uh, you know, major to go into. Well that decision is pretty much a win-win situation. Okay? Uh, there is no risk really. It is not like you, know, you take one thing you are not going to have a job versus another. It is really not that way. So you know, there is really no major danger there. So the word risk actually has a very negative connotation and I personally do not like to use the word risk when, you know, when there is something positive and something to celebrate about. Okay? Now again all this can be debated. We could go on and on debating what should we call this risk, uncertainty, etc. Now the other thing is some people like I said the example I said about coin toss you know if you know the exact force that was used, the speeds and you could characterize exactly where you hit when you tossed a coin you could actually exactly determine where it is going to fall. There is really nothing uncertain about it. Yes, if you had enough knowledge and information I agree. Now this could be hypothetical like in the coin toss example that you could actually measure and calculate the exact uh, values of you know the speeds and so on then yes uh, it may be even the result of the coin toss is somewhat certain. So a lot of people think of you know this thing is not there is nothing in the world that is uncertain so to speak because if you had all the knowledge information you can make. And I think I, I, I am subscribing to that notion okay? and I, like I said you know this topic is somewhat controversial. However most of the time we do not have that knowledge or we do not have that information and in that situation what we do is we characterize that as something that is random or something that is uncertain and that is what we are going to be doing in this course. Okay? So instead of giving you the definitions of what is uncertain and what is risk I am just going to say well if you perform an experiment or if you do something or analyze a process and in future you do not know what is going to happen with certainty we are going to call that as uncertain for the rest of this course. Okay? Now in terms of characterizing now this is a very very important piece uh, which we actually are not going to go into great details 
But we will see that we're going to assume that the probabilistic characteristics, like for example, if you toss a coin, I'm going to get heads or tails with probability 0.5. These types of characteristics I'm going to assume throughout the course is available to us. In practice, how this is done is using historical data. We will use historical data in order to figure out what's going to be, uh, you know, the probabilities of various events going into the future. So, but we, in our course, we're going to assume that we have these probabilistic predictions or we have forecasts, okay? But in this course, we will not talk about how this is done. However, that is where a lot of engineering and managerial intuition goes in, actually. So, it turns out that is a very, very important piece. However, the amount of science that goes into some of these things uh, is, uh, is, is so enormous in some sense, also so uh, specific to a situation, it's hard to make, you know, uh, something that is overarching over variety of domains. So, in some sense, we are going to look at a situation where somebody has done all this work and are giving us some probabilistic characterizations, okay? That's what's going to happen in this course with the caveat that, you know, if you want to do this the right way, you'll have to know how to take the historical data and convert it into these probabilistic predictions, okay? That is something that we will not go into in this course. However, in the beginning of the uh, of the next chapter or the next topic, we will talk about something called the secretary problem. That's the only problem throughout this course where we will not worry about the probabilistic characteristics. We will pretend like we don't know what that is, okay? Uh, but other than that, for every other single problem, we're going to assume that some characterization is already made. Now, uh, now the other thing is sometimes we use expert opinion. Sometimes it is not even possible to use historical data. Now, I do want to say that with a grain of salt. You know, many times experts also use some type of historical data to make some predictions into the future. We're not talking about, you know, taking of horoscopes and, uh, and, and doing a little, uh, you know, forecasting about how your life is going to be. We're talking about somebody who has an expert on some subject matter and can say how things are going to go into the future. So, in practice, however, you know, we do use historical data. Sometimes we could learn and uh, as we go. We may not have enough historical data, but we're going to collect them as we go and fine tune our decisions, okay? So, I do want to also recommend this one book. It's a book called Super Forecasting, uh, The Art and Science of Prediction. This is a beautiful book by, written by Tetlock and his co-author Gardner. Um, it's a wonderful book uh, which talks about, it's not a technical book, there is not much depth in terms of uh, probability and so on. However, it talks about what one uses to make great decisions. How do super forecasters go about making wonderful decisions? I highly recommend that, uh, that book. All right, we move to the next uh, notion, which is that of variability. Now, this is something that uh, is commonly used. In fact, uh, we, we will use the word random variables quite a bit in this course. Uh, and uh, so, we want to talk a little bit about variability. So, there, you are going to see a lot of variability, okay? Systems, we're talking about large things or processes, smaller things, like a system could be an entire manufacturing enterprise. A process could be something that a particular machine undergoes. Uh, an environment could probably be even larger than the enterprise, okay? All these exhibit some amount of variability over time. They, they have variability over across space or, you know, across locations. There's also a variability across entities. We're talking about people or parts that are made in manufacturing or the machines themselves or the items that are made um, and so on. So, all these things also have tremendous amount of variability. Now, the variability is considered to be random. For example, the color of the shirt, the next person walking into the door is, as far as we are concerned, random, okay? So, uh, if you look at, uh, you know, what is uh, the status of the machine at this point of time, uh, until we know what is going to happen, the status of the machine or the uh, the wear and the tool kind of goes randomly over time. There is also a little bit of determinism in it, and we will talk about that in the next bullet. However, for the most part, if you try to collect data, which a lot of companies are doing this day and age, especially with all the big data, they're collecting samples across time and across space, and if you model those things, you see some amount of randomness in it. And that randomness is what we call as variability. 
and that happens across time it happens across space it also happens across entities okay for example who did you vote for okay each person votes for a different person a uh, different candidate and that is considered randomly varying across people now what is random in here? Well, if we don't have the information that we saw in the previous slide, we talked about having the knowledge and information here. If you don't have that knowledge and information, we model those things as being random, okay, across time or across space. And by space, what we mean is from one location to another location. Now, there is also variability deterministically, and this is uh, uh, something that we, 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 ca we uh, make a major deal out of. By deterministic variability, we mean something that you can determine in advance, okay? So, uh, such as, you know, if you drove at a particular speed, let's say you drove on a road where there is no cars and you set your car to be driving at, uh, let's say, 80 kilometers per hour, in one hour, you will go exactly 80 kilometers, okay? So, there is nothing random in there. However, if you had traffic and you got slowed down, then clearly your travel time could change uh, significantly. So, uh, so therefore, there is a combination of both random as well as deterministic variation. Now, one of my favorite examples is uh, the uh, uh, solar cell, for example. So, if you look at solar power, solar power over time, over time, and on a cloudless day, it's a nice deterministic function, kind of goes like this and comes down in the end of, so this is the beginning of the day, end of the day, amount of solar power goes up and then comes down, okay? Now, it turns out that if you, this is on a cloudless day. Now, if there is some cloud, for example, uh, let's say we had tremendous amount of clouds, and then you are getting, you know, some random amount of, uh, yeah, it, you wonder why this happened. This could potentially happen, I was told, when you have, uh, you know, these clouds actually reflecting off some light and actually increasing. But for the most part, it's going to be below. So, the amount of solar power because of clouds could be below what is actually uh, available on a day that is uh, sunny. So, there is, so if you look at the blue line, there is this deterministic plus a random variability. So, the variability across time has both a deterministic structure in the blue one, okay. There is obviously at night, there is no light, there is no solar power. Uh, so, that is deter, I mean, there is nothing random about it. You know for sure there is not going to be any solar power. But in the day, it could be random because of the way the clouds are randomly moving about. Now, another thing is you could think of temperatures at various places and uh, if you look at different locations, you know, you see maps, you know, of, of, of a country and then you see the temperature here, uh, let's say is 30 degrees, the temperature here is 28, the temperature here uh, is, uh, let's say, 29 and so on. The actual temperature itself could be a random quantity. However, um, and there is some amount of deterministic variability. Certain parts of the country are necessarily cooler and certain parts are warmer. That depends on the altitude and other things, okay? Now, you also think about like the example that I gave a little while ago, the time to drive, okay. There is some deterministic time. I mean, you cannot go from, uh, let's say, from Delhi to Agra uh, in exactly, say, three hours, okay. Uh, but however, you cannot go there in, say, in one minute either. So, there is some amount of determinism. You kind of know roughly how long it's going to take, but it could be a bit longer. Now, there is also uh, some amount of uh, combination of determinism and uncertain in terms of how many movies, for example, are released on a Friday. If it is a holiday season, uh, such as a New Year or, uh, you know, so, such as a popular holiday, uh, you could see, you know, maybe there are more movies released around that time. Uh, and uh, so, there is some amount of deterministic variability. However, you do not know, you are not, it is not easy to predict how, how exactly how many movies will be released, say, for example, next Friday. Okay, so there are these notions of variability that could be both deterministic, we know exactly what's going to happen, and also variability where there's tremendous amount of uncertainty. That said, one more time, I do want to say that the notion of risk, uncertainty, and variability are somewhat ambiguous and unclear, and we will try to clarify some of those, but let's not be too hung up on those words, and let's go forward thinking, well, I'm going to derive some probabilistic notions for everything that we're going to see. All right, so that's going to be the next topic, which will be somewhat mathematical, okay? Thank you.